to the class period. So, number one is always the greatest compactor. Always, always, always. You always find the greatest compactor. Now, the rest of these, two, three, which we're going to finish today, and four, aren't really steps. These are like tools of the trade, right? If we were in a mechanics class and we were talking through tools, we'd say, okay, here's the sockets, here's the wrenches, here's the pliers, here's the screwdrivers. And then I'd say, which would you use on step one? It depends on what you're doing, right? Right. If you're taking out a screw from the front, you know, from, from the frame or something, you use a screwdriver. If you're if you're taking out a um, taking off a tire, you're using a lug nut wrench or whatever. So um, you, you use those tools appropriate. So after number one is always the first thing. It's always greatest common factor. After that, it's kind of which step are you going to do? So the sec, the number two, we looked at two terms. We looked at binomials, right? Two terms, binomials. And there was two different types, the difference of two squares, some of the difference of two cubes, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Number three, what was that talking about? Trinomials. Trinomials. Now, underneath that one, there's two types. Um, and actually, let's stay consistent here, three terms. What we call trinomials. And the other day we talked about when a equals one. Okay? So that's what we're going to pick up today in Roman number three, and we're also going to do Roman numeral four today as well. Okay? So when we talked about trinomials, so this would be Roman numeral three, a when a equals one. Let's say I give you something like x squared minus 7x plus 12. In order to factor that down to its primes, uh, yes. what do I do? What, do? what process do I think through? You just, um, like, well, you have to put the x's in there first. And then you, uh, uh, what's it called? You just did this. Yeah. Um, it was like the something would it has to like multiply to equal one thing and then add to equal the other. Very good. Omar, do you remember which ones? Uh, okay. I don't understand. Uh, if, it's, a, if it's addition, it's an addition sign on the 12, that means they're the same. Okay, so if this is an addition sign, yeah. both signs are going to be the same. Yeah. And this sign tells you what they are, right? Mm -hmm. So we have minus and minus. Okay, so multiply to equal what? Multiply is 12. As equals seven. seven, very good. So what are my numbers here? Four and three. Okay, now I'm gonna have negative three and x minus four. Wow. So that I get a negative seven. Now, where did you, Quinn, where did you get the x's from? You said put x and x, where did you get those from? The x squared. Correct, you take the square root whatever this is, and that goes in both places. So you have x minus three and x minus four. Now, what if though, today we're gonna to talk about, what if a is greater than one? When I put a number in front of that x squared, it kind of messes up my whole whole thing. So let's say we give you something like 2x squared minus 5x, and I think it's minus 12. Okay, very good. Okay, so now we have this, this issue where I have a 2 in front. So now it's not going to be x and x it has to multiply to equal 2x squared. So it's going to be like 2x and an x. That's going to mess up everything else, yeah. right? So do you remember the process we used? I don't really care for it, but we're going to teach it this year just to, because oh. it seems to work. Do you remember the concept of bottoms up? Yes, I do. Okay. So I taught another student who didn't really care for bottoms up, a different way to do it using the same, the same steps. Um, so let's use bottoms up. So what's the first step with bottoms up? Number one. Um, Say it again. Factor. No. What's that? I just have divide by two. two. You haven't heard of this? Yeah. Okay. What? Divide by two. Not divide by two, but actually, Multiply. you take a. Okay. Actually, <laughs> it should be the little letter a. I'm going to take the little a times the little c. So I'm going to do two times twelve. I have x squared oh, minus 5x, and I bring the 2 over to 12, oh, minus 24. Okay. And then number 2, you do the same as a equals 1. 
So you split up your x squared, x and x. Well, multiply is equal to negative 24, but add is equal to negative 5. 8 and 30. And what signs are they going to be? From the negative 8, positive 3. Negative 8. Wow, and let's freaking go. Positive 3. And right here is the reason why I don't like bottoms up, because a lot of kids see that. Oh, I'm done. Nope. Nope. Number 3. You have to divide by a. So that means I have to take this value of a and come back here and divide here by 2 and here by 2. Oh, wait, I moved it. So it's hot. Your final answer would be x minus 8 over, or x minus 4 and then x plus 3 over 2. Well, then this is, where, oh. this is why it's called bottoms up. You bring the bottom yeah. up. And it's 2x plus 3. This was my favorite one. And there's your it's so simple. Because every step makes sense. Perfect. So you just times the um, variable in front of the x by the last number. That just bring, bring it there. Bottom bring up. it there. Bring the bottom up. Shove it up. No, I'm at the first step. A, A oh, times C. Yeah. A yes. C. Okay. That does make sense. Okay. I used to stick things before? No. No? But I don't no? understand it. You understand it? You've never seen like, it? You don't lose How did you factor or try to lose it? Uh, what teacher did you have? Franco. I'll have to ask him what he used. Yeah. So why is it called like A equals 1, A greater than 1? Why is it called that? That's a great question. Are you, are you watching? Those of you who are paying attention. Here, A equals 1 because the number in front of x squared is a 1. A is greater than one because the number in front of x squared is not one. It's greater. So if on like on, on like a quiz or a test, is it going to say like solve a equals one and no. then two? Oh. It's going to say factor the trinomial, or it'll oh. just say factor. In fact, most of the time it'll just say factor the following, and you I won't tell you what tool to use. You got to figure it out. Is it two terms, three terms, or four terms, and go from there. Okay. All right. So, Cameron, does this make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's try this. You try on your own. So this should be review in some way. If you don't like this method, I do have others. We just want to look at it. Um, try this one. 8x squared minus 6x minus 9. Just to get you start off in the right place because last hour we had some issues. What do I do first? You times 8 times 8. 8. So I get 8 yeah. times negative 9. So you should have x squared minus 6x. OK, keep it going. Finish it up. If the fraction like can be reduced, like do you reduce it? Like before it was eight over two, it just reduces to four. Yeah. But like Yes. Okay. Even if it's a letter something else, re reduce it and then do bottom. Okay, got it. Perfect. Okay, so what multiplies is equal to negative 72, but adds is equal to negative 6? Positive 12 minus 6. No, wait. Negative, negative 12, 12 plus 6. Yeah. Negative 12 plus 6. Okay. So then we divide by? 8. 8. Okay. 
So I'm going to get x minus, so here's where 12 eighths reduces to what? 30 halves. 30 halves. x plus? 3 fourths. 3 fourths. And then bottom up. 2x minus 3. 4x plus 3. And the one other thing, too, about this is there's really no way, no reason to ever get these wrong. Because you can know for a fact whether you got it right or not. What can I do to check this? Just like factoring it out. Just FOIL it. Hey. That gives me 8x squared. That gives me 6x. That gives me negative 12. So it gives me minus 6x. That gives me negative 9. You go right back to your answer. Okay? So there's no reason to ever get, ever get these wrong because you can always check them. Assuming you have enough time to do that. Okay, we good with that? Cameron, you good with that? Be good with that? All right, let me show you a different way to do it that actually leads us into type four, okay? So let's take the same problem. We have, what do we have, 8x squared, whoops. Minus 6x minus 9. Okay, so when we multiply 8 times negative 9, we got negative 72, right? Mm -hmm. So then we decided it's going to be negative 12 and positive 6, right? That was my two middle terms, my two factors, right? Okay. Well, instead of doing bottoms up, let's take this and go 8x squared, and let's just make this negative 12x plus 6x minus 9. Let's just take this negative 6x and split it up into those two. Because what is negative 12x plus 6x? Negative 6x, right? So it means the same thing. I'm just writing it a little differently, right? Because yeah. if I combined like terms, we'd have our answer, yeah. right? Okay, so let's take this then, and let's solve it like we're going to solve type four problems. Okay, let's take these first two, and these last two, and let's group them together. What do these two have in common? 8x squared and 12x, what do those two have in common? Could be divided by four. Okay, so a 4 in common, what else? X. X. So let's factor out a 4X. What would I have left? 2X and 3, negative 3. Okay, yeah, minus 3. All right, what do these two have in common? 6X and negative 9, what do they have in common? 3. 3. Yes. What do I have left? Uh, you have 2x and negative 3. And notice those are exactly the same thing. Say what? So what do you do with the numbers outside the parentheses? Do you just ignore them? <coughs> what numbers outside the parentheses? 2x plus 3. Okay, well let's factor out a 2x minus, let's bring the 2x minus 3 out here. And let's factor out a both. Just like I factored the 4x out, let's factor out the 2x minus 3. These go away, and what are you left with? Wait. 4x Which is oh. the same answer you got in the last one. Oh, because they cancel out. You factored out front, they cancel, and what are left with this? The other factor? Period. And this is called I, factor I by this, this is called factor by grouping. Okay? Are you gonna make us do this? Not with these trinomials, but with, with four terms, yes, you will have to do this. Got it. Right. So that leads us to Roman numeral four, grouping. And this is when you're going to have four terms. So I tried to make the notes fairly simple. One, you always do greatest common factor. Two is if you have two terms. Roman numeral three is if you have three terms. Roman numeral four is if you have four terms. Okay. We won't get to anything bigger than that. Okay. So all you're going to do is very simply you're going to group it, group the first two and the second two. Boy, that's confusing. Group first two and second two. And then from there is just the greatest common factor. Let's give you an example.
Okay. Three x cubed. Three times. Yeah. Plus. Eventually. Three x cubed. Four x squared. Minus six x minus eight. Wait. Yeah, we're gonna stop right there for a second. So three x cubed plus four x squared minus six x minus eight. Okay, so what's my first question going to be, class? Um, what is the greatest common factor? Is there a greatest is common there factor? And if so, what is it? Two. So is there a greatest common factor among all four? No. no. So in these three, you have four, six, and eight. They're all divisible by two. Uh -huh, but three is the first three, they're all divisible by x. Yeah. There's nothing among all four. Yeah. Okay, if there was, you have to take it out first. Right. Okay. Since there isn't, now let's group up these two and these two. So what does 3x cubed and 4x squared have in common? x squared. x squared. So if I bring out and factor an x squared out just the first two, what do I have left? 3x plus 4. Yes. Okay. What does negative 6x and negative 8 have in common? 2. Negative. Okay, so here's just a little rule, too. It's not you, is it? Um, what? Why is there a bell now? Wait, where is this lunch? That lunch? That was, I think that's the bell to release. Start a second lunch, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we go at 1210. We go at okay, so um, here's a little helpful hint, okay? When this third term is a negative, whether, it doesn't matter what sign this is, always bring that negative out. So in this case, let's take out a negative two. So then what would I be left with? 3x. I take a negative out of the negative 8, it becomes four. positive 4. Now, here's the thing. If these two, I don't know why I keep doing this. Oh, my neck. If these two don't match, if they're not exactly the same, you made a mistake. That's not math. That's doing homework and taking a test. Okay? In real math, those can be different. You have to do some other issues with it. But for right now, in our class, if those things are different, you made a mistake. Good thing to know. Okay. okay. All right, so because you have 3x plus 4 in both of them, then I just simply take it out of both of them. 3x, factor it out. So then what do I have left? Uh, you have x squared and negative 2. x squared minus 2. Oh. That's easy. Now, is this the difference of two perfect squares? x squared is perfect. Mm -hmm. Minus is the difference. Is 2 a perfect square? Mm -hmm. What's the square root of 2? Two? 2. No, one. it's 1. 1 times 1 is 1. It's not. It's not a perfect square. Perfect square would be 1 and then 4 and then 9. So That's because it's not a perfect square, I am doing but you got to be careful and check and see. I could my have, might have to factor those down if it's a perfect square. What would have happened if it was a perfect square? You'd have to factor it. Oh. Like if it was x squared minus 4, you have to make it x plus 2, x minus 2. You have to keep factoring. <gasps> so much factoring. Oh, so you'd have 3x plus 4, what the numbers live? x plus 2, x minus 2. You would. You would. Okay. If this was a 4. This, this is that the factor out to be a 4. Okay. Then yeah. But because it's a 2, it's not perfect, you're done. Okay. But the 3x plus 4, you don't like try to factor that. Right? Well, you, get, you have to look at both of them and see and make sure they're both factored completely. I got you. So, like, Remember when you're doing the factoring tree, right? And you have, let's say, 40. Yeah. And you factor down, you get 4 and 10. Yeah. Well, you don't stop there because these aren't primes. You look and see what goes into 4. Well, 2 and 2. Same thing here. Does 3x plus 4, does that factor further? No. Does x squared minus 2 factor further? No. But you have to check to make sure. Very good question. Questions on grouping? Have you seen this before? Everyone always says yes, they got it, then I give them the test, and they're like, no, do so well. So here, try this one. You Sometimes try. It's, I just panic. Yeah, it's all for panic. Don't panic. Well, oh, that's so Easier said than done, I know. I can't believe I never thought of that before. I know, right? Brilliance. <laughs> Five <laughs> X cubed. <laughs> so let me ask you this, though. I wish I could bring you. In all seriousness. In all seriousness. What helps you get over that nervousness? Thing? Food. No. When it comes um, to um, the test. Yes. <laughs> like being knowing I'll be able to like like I the practice test was kind of helpful because I was able to use it. Mm -hmm. 
and then like I it, like I knew what was coming because it's kind of like the unknown for me. It's like I don't know what's gonna be on it, so I don't know what to like try to remember because I forget a lot. And if I don't know specifically what to remember, I don't right. remember any of it. Right. So one thing that's gonna be true on a test is I'm gonna give you a practice test. You just can't use it. No. But at least there's no surprises. You know exactly what's on it. That's I don't change the directions. I don't change the order of problems. It's exactly the same. So at least you, there won't be that fear of unknown. Mm -hmm. But you know, also I remember as a player, the first soccer game, because I played soccer through college, and, and through high school and college, the first soccer game that I was really nervous about, like I was like anxious, and was the first game I coached outside of college. You mm -hmm. coached? I, yeah, I coached soccer for several years. So wow. that's the first game I was really nervous about because I couldn't do anything. But as a player, as long as I prepared and I knew what we were doing as a team, uh -huh. there's no reason to be anxious. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. As long as you practice and go over it and know it, there's no reason to be anxious. Just go do what you know, know you're supposed to do. So um, here we go. 5x cubed plus 25x squared. Practice it until you can't get it wrong. Some people say practice it until you get it right. No, practice it until you can't get it wrong. How's that for a little emotional? That was so inspirational. You should put it on a poster with a cat that's hanging Tell it to Miss Lopez. Miss Lopez? Yeah, she'll, she'll cry. There you Probably. go. All right, we'll group these up. Is there anything in common about all four of these? Wait. No. 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 Factor, no. Group of factor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.